so excited to be here this morning to see all of the different projects that students have done at our elementary science showcase this morning. Students have been working this year with their classmates to find new things that they're interested in. Um, projects about things that affect their everyday life like germs and fruit oxidation and things like that. We're so excited to see the interest that they have put in to learning more about science as they work with their classmates and uh, move on to bigger projects like our middle and high school STEM fair in the coming years. Uh, we have several schools here today showcasing their work and we're excited to see this project expand into the coming years. For our project, we did what would make the pain the cleanest. Uh, we did what we made it. Our, our question was: I have toothpaste, vinegar, baking soda, lime juice, and alcohol. What would make the, the penny the cleanest out of all solutions? Our hypothesis was: I, I think the lemon juice is going to do the best work because scientists say that lemon juice makes a bit, a great cleaner and stain remover. They also say that lemon juice can cut through grease and hard water buildups. The, mater the materials we used were a, pro a project board, construction paper, signal letters, alcohol, lemon juice, vinegar, toothpaste, toothbrush, and baking soda, and of course, pennies. Our procedure, first, we started out with five solutions, which were lemon juice, vinegar, baking soda, toothpaste, and alcohol. Then we let the pennies sit and soak in the solutions for a period of 48 hours at school. Finally, we checked on the pennies and after 48 hours and got our results. When we tested all the materials, the penny that turned out the cleanest was the penny that was in the lemon juice. We know that because of scientific facts, also because we asked other people for their opinion. And we saw with our own eyes that the lemon juice cleaned the penny the best. In conclusion, this project was very both interesting and fun. We were able to gather lots of facts on what would make the penny the cleanest. We were also able to determine which liquid solution was the strongest to cleanse the penny coins. I would definitely recommend this project to anyone who wants to experiment something different, to have fun, or just to test out our findings. Report. The purpose of this experiment slash project was to figure out what would make the penny the cleanest. We did this project step by step because we needed to work and efficiently, effectively cleanse a penny. This was a very fun project to do. It, it helped me learn more about how how different solutions react to coins. For example, for example, the lemon juice made a huge visible difference. If you are someone into experimenting, this is for you. This. This project does require that you are patient because there is a two-day waiting period. When we were finished with the project, with the experiment, we were completely satisfied with the results. This is the beginning of the baking soda. This is the beginning of the vinegar. This is the beginning of the lemon juice. And this is the beginning of the alcohol. And this is the beginning of the toothpaste. As you see with the toothpaste, the toothpaste actually um, made the made a, a huge difference because it made it worse here. It made it seem like it, it got dirtier. This is the elementary science fair and all of these children have been working so very hard on their projects and they're here this morning to share them with us. The really neat thing about this is that it's an entryway for them to get used to the more pressure that will come as their um, projects begin to be graded and scored in the years to come. But you can see the enthusiasm every child I've spoken with and ask about their project. They're just so excited to share their findings. We're getting them interested in science. We hope that this interest that they're showing today will continue to grow and grow. And we'll have some future scientists from St. Lucie Public Schools that make a huge difference in changing the world. The 
This is my project. How does the battery's temperature affect how long a squirrel bot lasts? So first I got two batteries and I put two in a freezer. I left two out as a control group and I put two in a, a hot place. So the, t the two ones that I put, I ended up taking them out and seeing it, if it would work. I timed them, of course, using the squirrel bot. So the squirrel bot uses a DC motor, so that's the only way it can run because DC motors charge off of batteries, not AC motors, which charge actually into like your home, into an outlet. So we got markers and we got a plastic cup and when we plugged them in, it would start vibrating like so. So because it would start vibrating, you would have to, I would time it and then it'd be able to see how long it would last until it slowed down. The cold ones, the cold cups ended up sp like sputtering and not working as well than the hot ones, which were able to just run smoothly. So ended up in conclusion the hot bas the hot batteries lasted longer than the cold batteries and our, our hypothesis was that we both thought the cold batteries would last longer but we were wrong and the report was that we considered how much time we had to complete the project and kept in mind we did not want to make it too difficult or easy to understand. First, we made a squirrel ball for using up the battery's power, and then we timed how long the squirrel ball went. The last thing we did was to put everything we found out and everything we did in both the project and presentation. So the procedure was we had to get a plastic cup and hot glue the markers, and we had to get uh, also our battery and wrap a rubber band around it twice. So we had to get the battery and duct tape it to the top of the cup and hot glue our engine on the top of our cup as well. Hot glue the wooden heart on the tip of your engine, which is right here. And we had to repeat steps one through five until you have six robots. I had to decorate and I had to put two in a freezer, two in the oven, use the explode proof box, which we had for the materials. And uh, nine, we had to take them out and time them. Hypothesis says that I think that a light bulb would shine brighter if you're powered by more than one battery. But my hypothesis was incorrect. In, in conclusion, I think that light bulbs are very important in our world. My light bulbs did shine the same way when they were powered by one light bulb because the full voltage of the battery on each pole pushes as much current through each branch of the circuit as if the light bulb were connected to the battery by itself. So both bulbs shine with the same brightness as a single bulb connected to the battery. I'm Jean Zimba, I'm the principal for Mosaic Digital Academy, and I'm excited that our students at Mosaic Digital Academy are participating in the Elementary Science Showcase here at the district office. I am excited about having our students participate because we are expanding uh, our science inquiry at the middle school level. Uh, we've done very well in the past, but we really wanna have more participation. So we've invited our elementary students to participate in this science showcase, and they've come out to our school They've done their projects with their peers, and they've had lots of exploration time. So I'm here with Nicholas. Come on over here, Nicholas. Nicholas has a project here on forces and motion which, and mass. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your project? It was about the forces and mass. I used seven wooden craft sticks, seven rubber bands, a spoon, a rubber duck, 
a marshmallow, a golf ball, balance scale, and a tape measure. And one of the questions that I asked you earlier is, you used a golf ball, a rubber duck, and you also used a marshmallow. What other maybe objects would you want to use the next time you do this project? A softball. Okay, why a softball? Because it's round and it can be launched easily on a spoon. Very good. My suggestion was a dog toy, since I have a lot of dog toys around my house, right? Yeah. Why would something need to be round and not have different sizes? Because spoons have an easier time launching things that are rounder and have a more spear-like shape. Very good. Well, I'm here with Nicholas and I'm very proud of him. Uh, thank you and I hope that you get to uh, participate next year. Mm -hmm.